impeccable work. Like, <laughs> so realistic. Yeah, those realistic artworks like that um, take a long time. I think that flag took me, this flag took me about uh, 15 hours. That's guesstimating it. So, tools, talking about airbrushes. Uh, airbrushes, basically, I use Iwata airbrushes. Uh, I have other brands, but it seems like every time I pick up one of the other guns, it sort of, I end up with an Iwata in my hand by the end of the painting. So, I'm sticking with Iwata. It seems to be working the best for me, at least for the way I work and my technique. That's that's my favorite, uh, specifically the Iwata Microns are definitely my favorites. So one technique that we as airbrush artists use is the use of the stencils. I, uh, for a lot of my work, I like using HD stencils. I also use masking and masking, you know, it's, it's also a normal technique that we use for airbrushing. I make any mistakes when I work <laughs> continuously it's it's uh, at first I, I try to avoid mistakes now even mistakes just keep adding texture to the painting so it even looks even better uh, it's it's just having the confidence to uh, complete the artwork and seeing a little bit of uh, maybe the airbrush stroke didn't go perfectly straight like I wanted it to and it doesn't bother me I know I can always come back and adjust it. Uh, nothing, when, it, when I put paint on the surface, it's, it's not a finished stroke. There's always more layers that go on top of each other. And at the end, uh, even I won't remember there's a mistake there. So uh, for you, it must be easy because you are, have been in this uh, for a long time. But uh, what are some tips you suggest to fellow uh, Irish artists to avoid any mistakes? That's, it's kind of illogical what I'm gonna say, but it's basically make as many mistakes as you can, you know. And by that I mean do a lot of artworks, do a lot of paintings, and there was always gonna be something that you don't like about it. But the more paintings you do, the more confident you'll be. And when you complete those paintings, you'll see that mistakes that happen when the painting is 100 complete, 100% complete, you'll see that those mistakes blend into the painting and you know that's the difference between something that's printed out in a, in a printed machine or something that you create by hand it, it has that organic you want to call it mistakes but you know mistakes are part of the organic painting process but yeah it's mistakes is not something to be scared of it's, if it happens you just work on top of it you just work around it and when you complete the painting it, it all comes together you know so um, 
Everything you work looks like a lot of textures, a huge design of the scene running around. So, do you uh, make any rough drawing on a paper or any object before painting it? Directly on the uh, parts? Do I make any drawing or designs before painting? But yes, I do digital designs. And by digital design, I mean putting the pictures together in Photoshop and, and it gives you an idea of, about composition, about the placement of the, of the picture. Let's say, for example, on this flag, on this fairing. Uh, that's, that's how I start. That is the first planning process that I do. Is it based on the time you take or the object you're painting? How do I quote uh, for a project? Uh, the way I quote for projects, it's based on the project. It's not based on hours. Yeah, it's not based on time. It's really hard to keep track of the hours. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are not good to do business in an in a hourly basis or in an hourly rate. And basically work on small areas of the painting at the time, you know, no rush, just just completing one part of the painting, completing another one, all of a sudden like a puzzle it just comes together and and even me as an artist I'm impressed at the end, but it's not like I do all of that quickly. It just takes time. And all that time put together, it creates a beautiful painting, very intricate painting. Mm -hmm.